You'll see. Follow us. This place is called the Equator. You see in Uganda, yeah? Uganda is one of those countries that are so blessed. That are the Equator crosses through. Uh, so we are like on the line, like this side is North Pole and this side is the South Pole. Listen man, this is, this is my niece. She's called Michelle. Look, look, I am taking her with me to the village. The reason is I really want her to learn the ways of the village me who's her ancestor she needs to learn where i came from you understand are you ready yeah, yeah. are you sure you're ready yeah, yes, I am. tell me about what you're excited about today milking cows <laughs> <laughs> milking cows yeah that's what you want to Listen up guys, uh, we're here at a place called Luka, yeah? and uh, there's just so much fish, beautiful fish. I want you guys to see this kind of fish. All these guys are all over the car, they just want to sell the fish. Look at the fish. In UG we eat a lot of fish. You see, you see this, kind of, this kind of... The fish man on this road is crazy. Yeah? Ah. What, do you eat fish by the way? You do? Huh. Mm -hmm. eh? sell, sell the fish in English. How much is your fish? One or two. Hey, you tell me, tell me. How much? Where do you get the fish from? Speak English. Speak English. Yes. Uh, I speak in, speak in Uganda. Uh, uh, speak English, right? How much is your fish? One. Hey. 25 to 25 per each. 25 per each? Hey. What is your name? My name Christopher Kurumbasini Cheunizuaze Uganda. <laughs> Yeah. To warm it yeah. very well. To warm it very well because yeah. it's cold. Yeah. Okay. I mean, me, I want, me, I want uh, the wing. What happens is the sagara side. The sagara to what? How much are you saying? Two thousand per each. Yeah. That is very poor English, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Salt. Where is your salt? 
me a little salt, a little salt. Let me have yours. Wow. Hmm. It's good, eh? So listen guys, if you're, if you're coming to Kavari, on the road trip to Kavari, you always pass through this place called Rukaya. From this meat, this meat is, is uh, it's not free, it's, uh, and it's not that expensive really. So we're just gonna support a little bit, and then, uh, but for now, this is actually just tasting, tasting meat. And tell me you can't love this journey. Make sure when you come to Uganda, if you're out there and you want to go to Kavale, use the road. Use the road. Because if you fly, if you fly, you're going to miss a lot on the road. We are 297 kilometers in. Uh, we have a couple more. We have like 100 more maybe to go. Or 120 a little bit. But yeah, we are in a place called uh, Rampara. Yeah, so this is between Barara district and uh, Ntungamo district. And then after Ntungamo, we'll be going to Kabale, we, where we're headed right now. Uh, I think... As you've realized, uh, between, just slightly before Barara, basically it's farms, yeah? It's farms, it's cattle everywhere. You, you, you rarely see like plants, you rarely see uh, bananas or gardens. But now, the moment you pass Barara and you're coming now far southwest, you see a lot, a lot of bananas. Oh my God! Everywhere you look, it's bananas. You see all that? So much beauty to see just uh, ahead of us. The beautiful hills of Kavale. You'll be shocked. How beautiful. now the district not the town yet and uh, you can realize there's just so many hills yeah the hills are too many the the road is winding it's just winding and you cannot drive so fast because I mean you can get an accident you have to maintain between 60 to 80 you have to be very careful when driving along here my very first time to come this side I was a very young boy and there was no Tarmac road. Can you imagine? It was so scary. I swear I didn't want to come back to Kavale ever, ever again. 
but uh, of course back then I didn't even know there was something called tamak. We're like 20 minutes away from town and uh, this place is so cold like it's always raining. The reason they call it the Switzerland of Uganda is because it's always cold like 24 7 it's always cold and rain you can't escape rain. The weather changes here like twice thrice a day. At least in those changes there has to be some rain in it. So it's a, it's, it's a very special place so if you're coming to Kabale make sure you have something warm on you because it's gonna get cold. If if you tell me that there is no God I'll just say my guy you are lying because man there's no way you can tell me look at this beauty look at the nature look at how the guy made this road whoever guy it is next to each other and they are small and, and you understand when you don't have enough land then clearly you don't have enough money to even you know make a bigger house or a better house that looks much better you might think you might think there's so much land because when you look around actually it looks like there's so much land but you have to understand that these are hills yeah they're serious hills they're almost like mountains so you cannot put a house on top of the mountain or like in the middle of it because the landslides you can't there's just no way you can do you have to put your house in the yeah you see like there now that that, that guy is at any time a landslide can come and take his house so you have to be very careful when you're putting your house so that's why they put on the foothills of the hill in the in the just towards where the mountain starts, where the hill starts. So as to also like going up there, let's say your, your house was up there in the mountain. Imagine if you are fetching water, because if the, it's most likely that if your house is up there, you do not have a water source up there. So the water source always has to be in the valley. Now imagine you have to carry a jerry can of water up the hill. So that, that kind of lifestyle, it's, it's difficult, it's difficult. But you know, Bachiga are very resilient people. Because amidst all these challenges, they're, they're great people, you know. And I'm so excited to come to Kabale. You ready? <laughs> <laughs>